All right, make. Make, it's a Fargo. Model. Pickup. Year. Nine, well. Of the ownership. It's averaged out to a 1942. On oh, the ownership, what does it the, say? 1942. Okay. The front clip's a 39. The cab is about a 46 Fargo cab. And the box is a 1950 Chev box. Engine. 354 bolt main with 305 heads. Transmission. A turbo 400 that Curtis rebuilt for me. Front suspension. Front suspension is a stock S10 suspension. Along with the front brakes or stock S10? Yes, the whole complete front suspension brakes. So are rear suspension, S10. Rear suspension is S10. Right now it's a 411 rear end, but if you notice right there, I've got a 342 with a locker in it that I'll be uh, rebuilding and putting in. So the rear brakes are normal 10-inch GM S10 rear brakes. Drum brakes, yes. Yeah, okay. Wheels and tires. Uh, the front wheels are Nordic winter tires on uh, uh, Chevy Monte Carlo rims. And the backs are uh, BF Goodrich uh, TAs, uh, 235 TAs on the same rims. Interior mods. Interior mods. I put a set of seats in from uh, Isabel Olson from the blow-up car. I made a custom uh, hump in the floor, uh, like transmission tunnel, and for the the transmission tunnel between the seats, I actually used a piece of six-inch pipe that I cut in half and used for that. Um, Jamie Fraser gave me a rearview mirror that he used to have screwed to the wall of his garage to pull junk out of his eyes. Well, it worked perfectly. It's I from an IH. It's it is. Yes. Okay. It's from an IH. So it's from that's all I he ever had was IH stuff. True. So it's now my rear view mirror, it looks really awesome, it works well. And my GPS reflects off my back window and reflects through the rear view mirror to give me that heads up display. It kind of works out kind of neat. Uh, steering column is a tilt column out of a GM, probably an S10. And I'm fashioning door panels for it now. We're, they're around here somewhere. Along with a hood. Uh, that's not interior. Oh, but you're off interior you now. The hood isn't there because... I haven't designed it yet. Uh, when I set the front end on the on the vehicle to get it, <coughs> the dimensions right, I moved the front end inch and a half forward and an inch and a half up. By doing so now, the hood doesn't align properly, so I'm going to make a two-tiered hood where the main hood comes at the proper body line angle, and then I'm going to have an overlay on the front of the hood coming back. Uh, the, uh, my plan is to cut it out of aluminum checker plate and have it uh, cut out in a flame pattern and have it sitting an inch and a half off the hood, which should look really cool. Oh, wait, it's the heater out of The heater, it's a Cryco Deluxe heater, which is an actual Fargo aftermarket heater. Uh, in in, uh, in Dodges, they had a, a Mopar Deluxe heaters. Uh, the details, badges, emblems, options. Well, well it's got the aftermarket visor, which is really cool. Gives it the right look. Um, S10 power brakes. Um, the kangaroo. The kangaroo hood ornament. Uh, 35 Chev headlights. Um, the tail. Oh, hang on. I'll be right back. These are the tail lights I'm planning on putting on it. They're an original running light off of a 40 style bus, but I got some red lenses for them. And if I Put them on the rear fenders, they should look awesome, but you'll have to wait to see that. Indeed they will. Spring Meltdown, Rat Rod Magazine Car Show. Yeah, very likely, yeah. Uh, funny build stories. Well, let's see, the front clip, um, when we first saw it, it had two or three inches of moss growing on it, and sticks and branches all around it, and I looked at <clears> it and thought, Ew. We went eight hours into the bush. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Pat Patrick says, well, we should take that with us, because we, we drove for eight hours north. Uh, actually, we went northeast. We went east of Thunder Bay and then four Top hours Top of Lake Nipigon. Yeah. The little community called Laden, where we got permission to uh, check for and salvage any vehicles we, we found. Um, I didn't know what it was for, neither did anyone else at the time. And I thought, well, we don't need that thing. And Patrick says, well, let's take it. Somebody will be able to use it. Somebody will want it. 
So we drug it back and it sat around at our friend Russ's place for a while and then uh, we took it over to Ray's place because the bottom portion of the grill we noticed he could use for his 40 Dodge. Or 40 Fargo, sorry. Fargo Ray would not own a, do a, a Dodge. So we uh, took it over to his house and uh, Ray was out building, he was buying an S10 Blazer to make a snowplow out of. Mm -hmm. As we're talking to the guy, he, he saw my 42 or 48 Fargo that I was driving and he says, hey, that's a cool truck. I've got an old, a couple of old cabs out in the back 40. So we went back to check them out. I saw this cab and thought, I don't know what it is, but I got to have it. Turns out it was the Fargo cab that is now part of my build. Got it for 75 bucks. Why did you build it? It, it built itself. First unit gives me the frame, so I have it sitting over at my friend Dennis's house, and I've got the front clip that we just found mm -hmm. and had to bring home. The cab showed up for $75, and I thought, geez, last summer I bought this box for 120 bu 25 bucks from a guy on Pike Lake Road. It's a 50 Chevy <coughs> box, and I thought, that'll fit perfectly with the body line. So it just it decided it wanted to be built. I actually took the 26 Buick out of the garage to build this because this wanted to be built. How much do you like your friend Chad? Chad is so sweet. He's like a big cuddly teddy bear and he poses well. Oh yes, he does pose in front of boats <laughs> and cars well. Okay, should we pause this? Do we raise or just do it right now? We have to make them separate. Okay. Is there any other build things I need to talk about? That's, I think you pretty much covered it twice. Um, yeah, I think we're good. We're going to pause it now. We'll be back, right back after these brief after messages. These commercial messages.